Paul Varley. Thank you. Speaker, I want to talk about the situation at our local hospital, the Royal Stoke University Hospital. Winter crises there are hardly new, but year on year the crisis escalates. Each winter, our hospital features luridly in the national press. So often it's the worst affected, just as, no coincidence, its funding deficit is also England's worst. This winter, though, it's the first time that Royal Stoke consultants have taken to social media to apologise for 36-hour A&E waits, for corridors jammed with the frail and elderly on trolleys, yet again, and for what they now describe as third-world conditions. Mr Speaker, the background to all this is that of all the areas subject to so-called sustainability and transformation plans, Staffordshire's STP is the worst performing in the country. Before the 2015 general election, locally we, expunded, we exposed a funding deficit prior to the SDP TP that would have reached £250 million pounds a year by 2020. Since then, the issues have been exactly the same, but the figure has now more than doubled for health and social care. And the Royal Stoke accounts for over 100 million of that, having taken over crisis-ridden Stafford Hospital, for which extra government funding has now stopped. The response so far has not been to invest for change, but to launch a scorched earth policy. Community hospitals are being closed, wards shut, drug and alcohol services are axed, and lip service paid to the prioritisation of mental health. And where, Mr Speaker, is the effect most acutely felt at A&E and admissions at Royal Stoke University Hospital, already brimful to capacity, struggling to discharge hundreds of patients because social services are also in crisis. Mr Speaker, on the 23rd of November, I attended a CCG consultation designing your future local health services at Bradwell Hospital in Newcastle under Lyme. It's a hospital close to my heart. At the turn of the millennium, before I became an MP, I chaired our local NHS Care for All campaign, which saved Bradwell Hospital as a facility precisely to take pressure off the Royal Stone. <laughs> My father passed away there in 1997, and my mother, a former nurse, there at a after a catastrophic stroke three years ago. At the end of March last year, our local CCGs closed Bradwell Hospital, along with Leek and Cheadle Community Hospitals before it, and wards at Leek Morlands Hospital since. <laughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, I was not the only person at that November meeting to label the consultation as a sham. I also said I wish those, uh, those uh, uh, meetings could have happened at the end of February this year instead, after the winter crisis, the flus, the noroviruses had bitten as they're doing now. The CCGs had uh, tried to plug, pull the plug on Bradley in the, Bradwell in the autumn of 2016, but had to keep it open another six months to cope with the winter crisis last year. As late as November, they were saying they had no plans to reopen it, but in December, an inevitable volt fast happened. Madam Deputy Speaker, this is no way to run and plan a health system, lurching from crisis to crisis. And it's not just MPs and local campaigners, patients and their families that are saying this. Last year, um, working with local councillors, Charlotte Atkins in Staffordshire County, the indefeatable Joan Bell in Stoke, the reformed local NHS Care for All campaign, chaired by the energetic councillor Alison Gordon from Newcastle, succeeded in getting our closures referred to the Secretary of State. Before Christmas, this independent reconfiguration panel gave their advice, and that was damning against the CCGs. That verdict was delivered, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, to him on the 18th of October, well before the winter crisis. We would have thought he would have reacted, but no, one week later, the chief executive of our two local CCGs was appointed to run all six in, in, uh, in, in Staffordshire. Uh, that is the reward for failure in our area. Madam Deputy Speaker, things have to change. The Royal Stoke University Hospital has to be given more investment. We have to uh, not simply just have more cuts, otherwise next winter's crisis will be even worse.